And I just got home and the kids are waiting to play with me. So, um, instead of doing a bunch of charts, I'll just quickly run through my open positions. Everything either has profits locked in, uh, or I took profit, or at least, at the very least, my stop loss is up in my entry, so the trades are risk-free. So, I still have a position in Ethereum. Um, oh, I don't show that on the chart here. Um, vet trade went well. I took a little bit of profit on the spike. Now it's risk free. My stop loss is at my entry. So that means it's below the 55 EMA and the 222 and the 99 right here are about to get up above my entry. That'll give me a lot of support from those each of my dynamics. We have a nice strong trend line support right here. You can see, if you check this out, key trend line support there. Uh, as long as that holds right here, we're going to get a nice bounce off of it. Although uh, we do have a little bit of a reset coming based on the stoke. So I'm not sure if that support's going to hold. If it does, we're going to end up with a pretty bullish formation. We're going to have what I call a hidden ascending triangle. A hidden ascending triangle occurs where you have a perfect horizontal resistance creating an ascending triangle, but you, br you broke it very briefly. So we had this quick pump, reset, and came back down, and then the normal triangle resumed. So just because we briefly came up and went back down doesn't necessarily invalidate the bullishness of this formation, right? Because an ascending triangle is bullish because you are consolidating within an apex where that trend line support is going up and you're getting higher lows while you're getting a stable resistance, right? Now that stable resistance can temporarily break and then that sell wall can go right back in place once the order books fill back up and you can go back to having that same resistance. So since we're back to holding this resistance, I'm confident considering this to be an ascending triangle like I would if it hadn't been broken for a couple hourly candles. So watch closely here. We could be on the cusp of a big breakout as we get into the apex here on VET. If we fail to hold up this trend line support and come back down, that'll invalidate that possibility. But we're still overall looking bullish and at least my trade is, uh, is risk-free right now. Um, still have a trade on Nano. That was a nice initial breakout. Again, here it's a risk-free trade, although on this one I may move my stop loss up to lock an additional profit. The fact that we're bottomed out on the stoke right here and turning up is a good sign. Um, the initial breakout from when I first got in was, I mean, that was a nice surgical entry. I love those. Seven and a half percent breakout, so that went really well. Uh, right now, we have all that Ichima dynamic support 55, 99 EMA, tons of support, bottom of the cloud, 222. Pretty much four out of five of my dynamics are right there protecting my SL on my entry. So it's a risk free trade. I think it's a good idea to move my stop loss up to lock in about 1% profit since I don't see these supports failing given the amount of bullish support we have with the bullish reversal on the stoke as well. Really good chance we go up and probably test the top of the cloud. I bet we get up and test the top of the cloud anywhere from 370 up to 390 potentially, depending on how fast it happens. On Uni, this was a nice precision entry as well. Now I got in and then I set buy orders down here that never filled. So I don't have a large position, but I still got in at least so I got some position going and I made a nice little profit on it so far. So I'm going to move my stop loss up to just below the top of the cloud here. So it'll be at about at 18.95 Then I'll be locking in at least what four and a half, four and a half percent profit about. So no matter what happens, even if it tanks and comes back down, I'll walk away with at least a nice little profit. Um, the XRP, oh, I never actually got into that trade. I had a nice setup I was tracking and I never got in. Now we're getting a nice trend line coming up here. I may still get into a trade on XRP. Let me see how the four hour looks. Um, I may make a move on XRP, so I'll let you know. Uh, and then I have my ONT trade. That's been going really well. I had two different entries. My first initial entry got a 8%, 7.5%, 8% breakout up to about 10%. And then last night in the group, I shared this other entry for people who missed the first entry. And the more recent entry broke out as well. Since that perfect bounce, I said we're bouncing right on that each of my dynamic support at the 55 EMA. I moved my stop loss up to lock in 2.5% profit for my original entry. Obviously, the 55 EMA right here helped perfectly. Again, my each of my dynamic support putting in work. Um, we got that nice breakout from there. So now I'm able to move my stop loss up again, lock in about 6% for my original entry down here. And for people who got in with me at this point, I don't know if I'd move my stop loss up above my entry. I'm going to leave my stop loss here 
at around 60 cents. And that's gonna be for everything, my original entry and my second bag that I bought. I'm gonna have my stop loss at 60 cents. So my newer entry, that trade is risk-free. My initial entry, I'll have about 5%, 6% profit locked in and guaranteed. Short term here, it looks like we could be making another push up pretty soon. I like that we're resetting, but staying really bullish on the stoke here. While at the same time, you can see we're forming a bit of a bullish pennant here. So that flag is also quite bullish. Uh, so we're in position to make another push up here. And then once we get above this resistance, that's at 6377 right there. The next stop up is 654. And then above that, we don't really have anything strong until we get up to close to 70 cents. So there's a lot of potential here on ONT. Um, CELR, great breakout. That analysis was spot on. Very, very precise entry coming off of that falling wedge, as many of you know. Falling wedges are one of my favorite bullish formations. And of course, we got the breakout. Not only did we have the falling wedge, but we had the 222 EMA and the bottom of the cloud, two of my key dynamic supports in my Ichima model. So we got a really sick breakout on that. We are currently sitting on about just shy of 30% profit. Um, I haven't taken any profit or made any moves on this yet. So at, at this point, I'll probably sell about 30% of the position to take a nice profit given the fact that we're up 30%. And then from that point, I'll move my stop loss and probably set two stop losses. One, uh, one around nine, maybe around 960 here. And that would be locking in about 18% profit, and then I'll set my other stop loss much lower to only lock in about 10% profit. And I'll put my stop loss around 880, so that way I have my each of my dynamic supports, the 99 and the 55 EMAs, protecting my stop loss for extra uh, insurance to make sure I don't get stopped out on a quick dip. And I expect us to push even higher on here. I don't have a top target set just yet, but I'm thinking we could break up above 1100 on the next push if we just get one or two bullish candles on the hourly. And then, uh, what else do I have open? Uh, my NEO trade broke out nicely. Uh, unfortunately, I had a tight stop loss on this trade. I had, it was 2.6% below my entry. You can see it got a quick wick down and hit my stop loss. A lot of the time when I put the long tool like this, the stop loss I show on my actual chart that I share isn't where my actual stop loss is. Sometimes it's a little higher or lower. In this case, it was almost exactly right there. So I, I did indeed get stopped out by just a fraction of a penny on this dip right before it broke out. But my model was very accurate. So anybody who followed me get into that trade and you got into a similar trade, you're probably in a really good position right now. I would move up your stop loss to make sure you're risk-free. You can't possibly take a loss. And then beyond that, you could lock in some profits by placing your stop loss up around 2350, 2360. And that'll give you at least one or 2% profit guaranteed. Or you could even sell some take some profit right now since we're up about eight nine percent for my entry um what other trades oh i also have my iotx trade now that initial breakout was sick 11 percent pump off the bat and then down here when we bounced right here on the 55 vma one of my each of my dynamic supports again i bought another bag you can see we're turning up on the stochastic oscillator if you look down here on the hourly model so i think there's a really good chance we make another push up right here and get above thirteen thousand right here i think we're going to make a push up and get a couple solid green candles like we had for my initial breakout again this came out of a bullish pennant just like i showed you we have on some of the other current formations so that same formation that led to the iot TX breakout, we're seeing similar things come together on the other trades I just showed you. So a lot of them look pretty aggressively bullish, and I think IOTX is about to make a push up. So at this point, I'm risk free on this trade. I'm not going to make any moves just yet. Once we make this push up, if I'm right and we get up above that 13 right here, if we get up above that 13,000 level, whoops, get up above this 13,000 level up here right there, break that, then I'm gonna be taking seven, eight, nine percent. I'll put my stop loss locking in seven, eight, nine percent profit. Uh, and then lastly, Doge. I've had some incredible, incredible calls on Doge. So I had a couple really great breakout calls where I predicted these exact pumps from the original one down here all the way to uh, the second bounce and now this bounce. Now this bounce has given us another push up. It pumped for about 10%. Um, but I don't know if we're going to get quite the pump we got on the other ones, especially since we have a bit of a trend line here, trending down, creating some resistance. You can see it right here. So I'm not sure if we're going to get one of those big pumps like we got last time. So I did sell a bunch of it and I took a 10% profit and I'm going to let it ride. I'm going to keep a little bit. And that way, if we do get another big pump and we break into the cloud, because if we break into the cloud above this trend line, there's a really good chance we go all the way up to like 46 up here. So if that happens, I want to keep a bag. So I sold some to take profit and I'm keeping some in case we get the pump. 
And I guess that's it for now. Um, as uh, I get into other trades, I'll let you guys know and I'll keep you updated on these.